We'll have right. that one. We'll have some angels then. Yeah. You're just going to sit there now for the next hour going like that, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> to be honest, that might have been the best way to watch it, frankly. Yeah. Hello and welcome to a Talking Mouth special. Uh, we've done a lot of new releases and we've done old stories. This is the first new series we've tackled and we are going to be talking about Doctor Who and the Flux. Um, I'm Paul Oliver, and joining me today are... Hello, it's James. Hello, it's Jason. <laughs> and hello, it's Ben. I, I can't believe you did carry that through. He... He carried that as a gag through. I can't it believe it. It, was, it wasn't the best thing I could have done, actually. But um, I just thought I'd do it because it just seemed like a good idea when we were rehearsing this. But anyway, there we go. I'm sure the flux seemed like a good idea when they were production planning it. But hey, so <gasps> let's start off then. Um, I think we, we're going to say straight away here that James is our flux expert. Well, someone has to be. So, well, so I think if anyone's not sure what's going on here, James is going to be able to tell us. Do you, do you want me to do a synopsis of the, the series or what do you want me to do? Or just answer questions as and when they come up? I think as and when, because you, if you try and um, try and explain it all, we might be here for six hours. Okay. Um, so... What, what were our anticipations coming to? Did we, did, were we looking forward to this as, as an enterprise? I think feelings are a bit mixed based on the first two seasons. I think the fact that COVID had hit production, the fact that we were just going to get six episodes, then we were told it was going to be six episodes that were all part of one story. And that was, you know, that was seen as a more positive thing, bringing back cliffhangers, having that sort of longer storytelling, which is what um, uh, Chibnall was better known for. You know, if you think about Broadchurch and, and seasons like that, series like that, where it's all about the long game rather than individual episodes. So I think there was a, there was a, a hope that that was going to work better. And we'll, I'm sure we will talk about that. Um, but I still think the fact that they'd announced um, Russell T Davis coming back before, you know, before this had even gone out, I think also changed people's perceptions of or their anticipation for this this season. So it's, it's a bit of an odd one, really, that, that some people were delighted by the news of Russell T Davis and so saw this as a sort of, you know, final wrap up and I can't wait for 2023. Um, other people thought that it, it overshadowed it a little bit and it was, you know, kind of poorly timed Oh, actually, though, James, for me, because I don't, I, I know, appreciate that the news broke about um, Russ coming back, but you know, I was certainly not swayed. My 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 opinion or or my thoughts about this, you know, I was looking forward to this this new season coming on, um, because again, it was it was going to be almost a sort of an episodic arc type story, which I I do have a slight preference towards, um, and. I think, you know, I think it's fairly well known. Uh, I didn't have a great deal of love for the timeless child um, changes that were brought through um, at the time. Um, and so the last couple of seasons for me have, 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 have definitely been misses. So there, there was a certain part of me that was hoping that, you know, I'd be coming into this and, you know, uh, I could I could I could look at this series in a slightly different way than I had done the sort of episodic um standalone stories that had happened previously but I don't think the news of Russ swung my opinion or has or has swung my opinion going into watching this um any more so than I think it would have done I love how close Jason is it's not Russell it's Russ <laughs> <laughs> wow my mate Russ yeah well when the news broke I, I, would, I, I, would, I would be slightly unkind in saying that the news didn't broke. The news was purposefully announced by the yeah. BBC when it was. So were I to look for patterns in the puddles, I don't know to what extent it's, he's coming back. It's all right. Here's, here's the next season. I, I, maybe. 
Dan, were you looking forward to having a bit of flux? <laughs> yeah, um, it was, uh, as everyone else has mentioned, the whole episodic thing um, would be a, a very interesting uh, format as we haven't had anything like that for a long time. And the fact that we would get cliffhangers and we'd also get the introduction of a new companion in Dan um, and uh, also introduction of a couple of semi-regulars as well, like Jake Banderson as Vinda. So, um, yeah, and, and I think as, as you, you've already mentioned about the whole COVID thing that was filmed under that, so it was gonna be very difficult to see how they realized it. And, um, and where the money went and um, if it was going to look um, a bit odd because of any social distancing problems or anything like that. But yeah, um, it was, I don't know, it was, it's, it's, it's sort of that thing where you think, well, I'm going to see how it goes and then make my decision afterwards. Strangest marketing thing pre-Flux was that they did a, a, a telephone number, didn't you? You could phone up. I don't know whether for the for the sort of regeneration special they're going to do a fax that you can send it to or something. But I, in in this day and age where all the kids are on TikTok, I think asking people to to phone up a number for a message seemed seemed quite old school. Did anyone phone her up? Yeah, I did. How many times, James? How many times? Just, just the one. Just the okay. one. There was a there was a hidden code thing as well that I saw running. I mean, I didn't participate in that, but there was a hidden code thing that was running on, on social media. I think, I know we, we've, we talked about this, but not on a, on a recording. We talked about the advertising of this, you know, this series. And, and when they announced they were going to be doing their first trailer, I think they were in America, weren't they, doing a panel? And then the, the, the first trailer was just literally 20 seconds of, of the three main cast members in just various different uh, scenarios with nothing about any of the villains or any of the scenarios at all. And I, I remember there being huge outcry that was what was the point of this trailer? And then we waited ages and ages and ages and ages for another sort of teaser trailer, which gave us a, a little bit more. Um, so it, it, I think from a marketing point of view, as well as the, the, the Russell T Davis announcement, I think the marketing was pretty poor on this series as well. Um, yes, there were some things which were nice that they were a surprise, and I'm sure we will come on to that. And, and there were some things that I thought, I'm glad that wasn't spoiled in advance. But there was nothing really to generate the buzz around the series until we got to literally two weeks beforehand. And then it was like all over the shop. Like you say, there was the phone number to ring. There was this secret code. There were all sorts of weird bits and pieces that were going on. Um, you know, the, the visual behind me, I think the visuals are really nice. You know, the, the, some of the, the, the marketing that's happened since it started, beautiful, but none of that was beforehand. So none, none of it was building up to, to, the, to the season. So I think there's a, you know, when we look forward, you know, to Russell T. Davis. That's something we know he's very good. Or if you're, if you're Jason, it's Russ. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's very good at marketing things. He's very good at pushing it out there and building the hype. Whereas with this, there, there really wasn't any of that beforehand. The social media has got taken down as well, didn't they? Is that part of the, yeah. that was part of the pre-advertising, <laughs> yeah. wasn't it? I remember that. I remember that where they just completely removed what was it, Doctor Who online or something like that? They just completely took all the Doctor Who, yeah, all the Doctor Who's off all the platforms. Yeah, yeah, and and I know a lot of people thought, oh my god, you know, uh, like, oh, this is a missing episode or something like that coming back, and then <laughs> when it was that, they thought, oh, oh, okay, <laughs> is that it? I mean, dare I ask uh, as contrary as I am here the, the visual looks beautiful and it's a lovely poster with them all dancing in their rainbow ribbons hmm. but the flux is something that's meant to be destroying the universe so they're all dancing about like it's a maypole isn't it isn't it meant to be something a bit more perilous looking rather than aha we're we're at space pride maybe they're trying to reenact the end of the demons you know dancing about if only if only it had been as good as the demons what the first reviews in there you go thank you master the first of many um 
it's interesting. I don't know whether the sort of lack of uh, pre sort of publicity on it is slightly down to the, the apathy that there is. And I, you can't, you can't dress it up. I, people are happy. And, and if you enjoy it and you've been enjoying it for the last however many years, I, I, absolutely fine, lovely, great. But as a general public thing, as people, uh, families, I know my family don't watch it. They don't, they used to watch it. It would be on a Saturday tea time. They would have it as part of the evening viewing. My family, the media family who aren't fans, do not watch Doctor Who. I don't know anyone who isn't a fan of Doctor Who that watches Doctor Who now. It, it doesn't seem to be something that people are like, oh yeah, it's, it's great. I, I, you know, people are like, oh yeah, I think I stopped watching when Matt Smith was in it. And it's kind of like, I mean, I, I, I yeah. certainly don't think the fact that we've had um, so many broken runs as well has, has, has mm -hmm. helped this. I don't think it's retained the, the public's support. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when you, you've got like three specials across spread across 18 months, two years, which is, you know, sort of sort of what was happening a, a while back. And obviously we've got that to come again in, in 2022. Um, I think if you've got a regular continuing series and <clears throat> I also think if you've got something that is watchable when you can dip in and out of it as well because I do feel that um in 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 the last few years in particular it's not an easy series to dip in and out of in kind of the way it was when it first came back sort of back to you know back in the sort of uh you know 2005 onwards it you could dip in and out of it more there it what you weren't relying on overarching massive complicated storylines and retconning and all sorts of things that was going with it so um I think you held an audience better. But I also think TV habits have changed a little bit as well. And that's part of it because how many people can honestly say they're watching Doctor Who live now that you're not picking it up, you know, on a stream a couple of hours afterwards or watching it, you know, a little bit later on in the week. Yeah, it's absolutely, absolutely true. Sorry, Jason. Um, um, James, um, it's, it's, it's very true that um, uh, I think anyone who would uh, tune into Doctor Who now just sort of randomly would probably then tune out because to them, especially say in the middle of in, in the middle of the, the the flux episodes, they wouldn't have a clue what was going on. And unfortunately, if people switch channels and then they watch something and they think, I don't know what's going on, what's happening, I don't understand any of this, they're not going to stick with it, are they? So I think unfortunately in, in that respect, you're right, Jason, that there are no sort of easy plots to follow nowadays where it's where it's something that the, the casual person on the street can tune in and think oh i'm going to see what all this is about because there's so much old stuff thrown that you know all, all this complicated stuff thrown at you and even and and if even the fans have difficulty in trying to work out what's going on how what, what is the general public going to do you know I'm, I'm and I was say during, during the trial run when they did the, the blurry photographs at the start of say previous on the trial over time, or Perry was abducted by if they'd done this for this, you would never have started the episode. <laughs> and and how would you even start? How would you even say, well, previously on the flux? Uh, well, we can't explain what that bit was last week because it's going to be explained late. Well, it might not be explained later, it might be explained in a future special. That happened last week. Also, what happened that and you'd be like, well, the, what the what the mm. what the, the jangle? But I would say if you look at because that's something I saw quite a lot in in feedback was about the, the the casual viewer and to be honest with you my my personal opinion is that they kind of just went where the figures are at the moment for viewing figures why are we bothering with the casual viewer because if you if you look at series like Stranger Things or Line of Duty it, it, they're not programs that you can watch from the beginning. What you do is you hear other people are watching it and then you watch, you binge watch. And, and, and that's the different types of audiences that, you know, they're looking at now is, is people, you know, I've seen people online saying, I'm not going to watch it until the last episode goes out and then I'm going to watch all six episodes back to back. So I think it, with this particular story with Flux, they've tried a lot of experimental things some things have worked, some things haven't worked. Yes, if I was flicking through on a Sunday night and I was, you know, waiting for Top Gear, I'd probably watch, you know, two minutes of this and go, what the flux, basically. And I'd probably turn it off uh, or wait and, you know, watch another channel. But I think it, it, the, the, what they've tried to do with this inter you know, interlocking stories is to try and maintain 
the viewers that they've got. And viewing figures did go up in the middle of the, the flux uh, stories. Um, obviously you don't have the consolidated figures because that's really what people look at now is because people watch it after it goes out. You know, it's not the big ticket 9 million you know, viewers or, or on the first episode. It's what happens with the consolidated figures afterwards. But it, I think... James, I'm yep. not sure that's true because I've got I've got the numbers here. It says 5.10, 4.6, 4.5. That, that's going down, babes. That's on the first three episodes, and then it went up for episode four. It went up by ten thousand people the week after. I don't so think it was. A, totally I don't think it was. A, that's, I don't think it was a turnaround. It, it, for the first four weeks, it dropped, and then ten thousand people joined it for the fifth episode. I don't know whether it, Strictly yeah, was was right, running late. Right. Is that the consolidated figures? That's what I'm saying to you. Is that yeah, because they've done the consolidated now for the, for the last, what's it, so, mm. yeah. But, you know, like I say, it's not, it's not, you know, and it hasn't been for quite some time, the big events that it, that it was. So where are they going to, you know, where are they going to get a whole load of new viewers for this six episode run that was, uh, you know, a, complete story in six episodes i don't think that they were but again i think we're talking about we're talking about the casual viewer here tuning in but even uh, even the dot even the fans have tuned in on this one and haven't really you know fandom split here on the on this six parter that's just gone out it's fair to say looking at the reactions that were coming out after um the last episode aired um just the other night you know we are talking about um there was a fairly hefty split um and, and i think you know it has confused quite a number of the regular viewer um who have who has persevered and followed through with this necessarily i think it's become almost too complicated and i think that you know that in itself if it's complicating fans even if it's even if it's a binge watch or a much must watch or a catch-up watch or whatever that might be you know, if I if I watch something like WandaVision, right, I'm going to I'm I'm you know, do I need to know the whole background to those characters to get into that series and, and watch it? I possibly do, but I didn't. And I didn't have the background when I watched WandaVision. And I jumped into that and, and watched all of those and thoroughly enjoyed them. They weren't overly complex in, in, in some of the storytelling. And it was a series you can follow and you can dip in and out of if you want to, but you can follow it quite easily. Even as a fan, I wouldn't go into this and I would go, would have gone in absolutely and binge watch this, but I've come out the other end and felt that's actually a little bit too painful because I'm really not understanding a lot of what I'm seeing in front of me on the screen. I think also sort of twofold. The first episode got almost 6 million viewers. The second episode got almost 5 million. So people tuned in and didn't come back. So that... If, they, if the first episode had been really good and people had gone, oh my God, Doctor Who's back, you should have seen it Saturday, it would have had a retention. I think it would have had a, a, a sort of, it would have held. I, and they marketed it, the, the, the notion that it was Doctor Who flux, that was the arcing thing, that it was six, six episodes of a self-contained season. Felt like they were saying, here you go, you, you can join it and, and you have the new companion coming in and he can do all the, all the TARDIS is bigger on the inside. You can have all that stuff. And it's your, your sort of your, your reboot. But then you have that, and then everything sort of swirling this is continuity. And, and my, 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 my grounding point, I think, about Doctor Who that's increasingly happened as it's gone on in the last few years is it's Doctor Who. It kind of doesn't need every week for you to delve into the, the backstory, the angst, the traumas, the history. Doctor Who, and, and having watched quite a few sort of Hartnells lately and Troutons. The magic of those early stories where the TARDIS lands somewhere, they have an adventure. The TARDIS is a fixed, they, it ju they just land and have an adventure. And so the, I get that drama changes, I get that, that the audiences change, but this kind of strange notion that you've got to keep going, well, this previous incarnation did this, that did this, 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 oh, bugger off, can we not just have an adventure? I'm kind of with Terry Six here. The kids just want the fucking Daleks. Can we not land and have an adventure? And it just seems a shame that this didn't do that. And, and there were so there were so many things that were just pissed up the wall. I'm gonna I'm going for it now. I'm going for it. 
Skeletor and his missus, right? What were, what, what, what was wrong? What, what, what were they doing? They, they just spent six weeks telling everyone how nasty they were before getting sent away again. What, what was the point? They, and, and there's such a, a, a slap in the face to the actors because they give such brilliant performances. I adored both performances. Um, it, it's Azure, isn't it? And, yeah, Azure and Swarm. Yeah, the Swarm, okay. Yeah. Skeletor and his missus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but they give such amazing performances and they are so good and they look great. The design's great. I mean, they don't, they don't like physical things, but they do like embroidery. Um, <laughs> but, but it's just like, you just spend six weeks saying you were really bad. But you, you touched a few people and made them disappear. But what, 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 what were you there for? So I, 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 on, on that, I do agree with you that the d- dispatching of Swarm and Azul, I think up until that point you know they, they were an interesting new villain uh, you know they they were testing um the doctor particularly in the in the last episode where they were effectively torturing her and saying we, you, you got, we're going to make you watch the end of the universe again and again and again and we've got the power to essentially wipe out your entire history and then rebuild it and wipe it out again and that you know the level of peril if you like for the doctor at that point was was so high and then suddenly you have time appear and and time says you know you failed and then basically does what they do which is click their finger and make them disappear the the only thing i would say is that when azure is disappearing she says um ascension so I, whether or not we will see them again whether actually they're not dead, but, you know, it, I thought out of the whole of the final episode, which was mixed, I must admit, and I know we've talked about it, and I am a fan of the Flux, but I think the, there are a few misfiring cylinders in the last episode uh, and a few wasted opportunities as well. But I think the idea that time is now stalking the Doctor and has just basically done a very similar thing to Ood Sigma, at the, you know, for foreshadowing the the tenth doctor's um death time has said you know you won't regenerate this you know i'm coming for you basically but it i think there was an element that the the two villains you're right put in an amazing performance i really loved it and there was a real sense of i don't you know they might touch dan or yaz or anyone and get rid of them just like that you know it was it was that kind of danger to then just immediately be, you know, time turns up and says, I'm disappointed you haven't done what I wanted you to do. So there you go, you're off. But what did time, um, time is like a construct. And what did the construct of time want Skeletor and his missus to do? Because they they were acting independently because Skeletor and his missus, correct me if I'm wrong, Skeletor himself broke free from his chamber by some means not described. Attacked you in, let him out. Right. She said, she said, I unleash Swarm and Azor into the universe because there's a battle between time and space and the Flux is designed to, re- is to, design to obliterate space. The Flux was designed and, to obliterate the Doctor, though, she said. Yeah, she, yeah, they wanted to basically obliterate the universe because the Division was on the process of moving to the next one. So Swarm and Azor were released as a virus, uh, Tetuin describes them as a virus. They, she released them back into the into the universe. They were from another dimension, released them back into the universe to essentially stop the Doctor trying to stop the flux. And they were on. They were working for this new sort of arch villain, which is Time, apparently. Who the Doctor appeared- didn't know about the flux till 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 Azure and and Skeletor told him about it. So told her about it. So she sort of, and, and if she'd unleashed them, could she not have taken a safety measure against them touching her? I, I, I'm sorry, can I just interrupt? I want yeah. to, when, when you mentioned that earlier, James, I just want to say something because it's true. Swarm and Azure go around, you know, all these episodes and 
and they go up to people and they and they touch them and and the people you know dissolve wh wh whatever they do die, mm. die some some way e even that flying triangle thing she said touch them and psh, it goes like that yeah. in the temple when they're in the temple swarm goes up to yaz and puts his hands on her throat and she says get your hands off of me mm. why didn't she dissolve then i'm assuming it's a power that they can they can turn on and off because there's a scene where he touches the doctor as well in the sort of flashback sequence mm. yeah but it's just it, it seems a bit odd that he mostly touches everyone and they dissolve but then mm. certain people they don't dissolve so is yeah, that the scene, up this, to him or the scene where he rescues his sister who's been incarcerated in a human he mm. doesn't actually touch the the male sort of companion he touches a light and and then sort of disintegrates so it doesn't i don't think it's actually physical touch i think it's more of a just a power that they're able to to reduce someone to to ash but she she, she gets a warning that she's she's about to have a problem so she knows that that she's hiding as something mm. and then she's hiding in a human body but Skeletor's hiding in a big cage on the moon. He was imprisoned, yeah. So he was but imprisoned. They were both imprisoned because the flashback has them both imprisoned yeah. by Joe Martin. But in the sequence where Jody and um, Joe are sort of swapping faces in the sort of mashup in that sequence, she says that the, the punishment is either imprisonment or your mind erased and being hidden, basically. So the obviously chose to do one for one and one for the other and but herein just... lies the and herein lies the issue isn't it this is so complicated there is a there's a there is a level of complication here that just doesn't need to be there you can you can tell a simple story across six parts you can have several story um lines running alongside it but when you've got a zillion bad people you know the daleks the cybermen you've got the swarm you've got the the, the, the giant serpent the, the grand serpent you've got all these various things all flying around and and and, and buzzing through a storyline it is a difficult enough story to follow this without all the other strands coming in there so this comes back to it this is just overly complicated it feels because it the flux like was destroying space but then yeah. time was being buggered up as well and the Santaran started traveling through time and corrupting time for it's kind of like and and, and as you're in thing you were like we don't care about space we only care about time because we deal with time so it's like it's like the flux was bugger all to do with them traveling through the thingy and then the Santarans suddenly seem to be the brain boxes that can outwit the cybermen and the daleks it's like trick to nothing was consistent the, the Santarans out out brained the cybermen and the daleks but if you showed them a curly whirly you could infiltrate their base. <laughs> yeah, the, the corner shop bit was quite. <laughs> oh my lord! Why didn't they just? Why didn't they just forget the corner shops? Why didn't they just invade Cad Cadbury's and just be done with it and actually, <laughs> actually, just go get the chocolate directly from the factory? I hope we have a future, a future story at some point where they say, right, you know, we've got gold bullets for Cybermen and we've got curly whirlies in case it's the Santara. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I think therein is another massive fault I find with uh, with the Chibnall thing is that this year he's obviously thought Russell does a great line in sorry Russ does a good line in humour, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do some jokes. But he, every time a joke appeared, it was a joke, and it was kind of like this is going to be a joke now. And and it was there. It wasn't part of a character or part of a sort of. It didn't feel natural. There was there's no sort of wit to it. It was just this bit's the funny bit. Everyone, here we go. And Although you do feel there's a big finished box set just waiting for the man on the mountain. Oh yeah, the hermit. Yes, definitely, definitely. <laughs> yeah, but they'd get Jacob Dubman to do the voice, wouldn't they? And he'd be like, "Oh, you wretches." <laughs> but, I mean, but the, the thing, the thing that I think slightly breaks my heart about this whole endeavor is that there were so many great performances and great actors in there doing some amazing work with poor material um uh I, i'll let someone else speak any second but kevin and i outstanding loved him as jericho 
And the, the, the biggest, stupidest thing about that final episode was that they just killed him. They did, he didn't die heroically. He didn't save someone. He didn't have a big moment. He was like, I'm going to destroy the Santaran fleet. Boom. It was like, yeah, I dropped my ring. <laughs> yeah, it's like, true. Well, and, what and, is that? And then what happened is that he died. And despite Dan and Yaz living with him for years over those episodes, um, Yaz just sort of looks at the thing and goes, Jericho, like that, and just sort of says his name. And Dan doesn't even cut to Dan saying, oh my God, I'm so upset, my, my, my dear friend Jericho. They just thought, oh, oh never mind. And, and she couldn't pilot the TARDIS in to save him, but she could pilot the TARDIS into the, the, the future form thing that the TARDIS didn't want to go into. It's like, mm, I get this kind of thing, but come on, love, I don't buy this as you can't save him at this point. If he did just... He'll, he'll be back at some point, or he'll be in a big finish. They'll, they'll, they'll manage to wreck on the fact that he, he managed to get away in time. And... and Think. The, point, the whole point of bringing Kate left was stupid. I mean, she was yeah. the only person d defending the Earth. She hadn't got any help. <laughs> or was she just hanging around the tunnels? I mean, apart, I, from the, I, apart from the guy that we, did, we, did, we heard nothing from, other than he was hanging around a bus stop and had a snake <laughs> come out of his mouth. Oh, he, he knew where she was, but he wasn't helping her. So, so I mean, they I, kill I, off someone that you've got no emotional connection to. If you've seen him earlier in the episode with Kate and she'd be like, oh my God, keep the secret. If you'd felt something, but just some random guy who just goes, I don't know where she is. Oh, she's downstairs. And then just dies. It's like, oh, he's supposed to I mean, Unfortunately, Kate falls into the category of a few characters where you just think that was a wasted opportunity. I, I like the fact that he went back and addressed, you know, the, the, I can't remember, it was one of the Dalek ones where they phoned up UNIT and the, the woman on the phone said, oh, they don't exist anymore. And I, So I like the fact that he's gone back and sort of explained why he did that, because at the time there was a huge outcry about it. And I think it's great to get um, Kate back in. But in that last episode, she's pretty much standing in the background for the whole time. And I mean, that was one of my niggles with the last episode was like, don't bring Kate back. Don't make her the, you know, the, like you say, the sole, you know, runner of this resistance, not show anyone else with her. And, you know, the fact she's skulking in these uh, mines, you know, waiting, you know, waiting for help to turn up. I, I felt that was, um, disappointing the, the Williamson so the guy who made the tunnels um that's actually a real thing so not the doors to other universes but the tunnels themselves the Williamson tunnels are real and no one knows why they were built so I thought it was quite good to use that at the beginning mm. but again there was no explanation as to why there were all these doors to different places um and he just, you know, randomly appeared in different points of different stories, you know, basically running down a corridor and then appeared and then disappeared or appeared on the ship in one of them. And there was, I thought, again, there needed to be some, some explanation as to how did that happen? I mean, he just basically said, I was doing some work on my land and just walked and, and found myself in a, in a different time. But I think, Going back to what we said about the COVID, I think uh, for me, I think they've tried to put 10 stories worth of material into six without actually going, you know, what what can we, you know, Vinder and, and Bell. <laughs> and my worst fear was that the baby was going to be the doctor. And I and I and I was we, we don't know that it's not, though, do we? Because there's still three more episodes to go. Oh, I think they'll come back, but you know, I thought we were going to have some sort of red dwarf, you know, left in a box underneath a pool table by a <laughs> James. I was, going to, I was going to scream. But here but, in this is where it lies the problem, though, James. You said it's yeah. ten stories into six episodes. It's way more than that. The opening episode in itself was so convoluted and so um, almost incomprehensible at times. The sound and the volume mix with the voice with the with the mm. with the voice track is bad anyway, but you, you, you it set up a massive 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 story. Okay, and we had all these different strands sitting in there. <clears throat> it needed a killer final episode, right, to answer this up and to bring it together, not string it along or push it into another story or whatever have you. So the minute he's written that opening story and that opening story's gone out, the expectations are really, really high that you're going to have the payoff 
after six weeks, at the end of a six part story, you should have that payoff. But because there are so many storylines and so many things going on, you try and wrap that up in 60 minutes in the last episode, you, it's going to become difficult and it's, it's going to crash and burn because, you know, that's why the character of Kate is, is pushed into the background. This is why things aren't explained terribly well. Um, it's too rushed. That should have been a 13 week epic spread across with the different storylines dipping in and out as you go through it, but not all trying to smash into each other week after week. I mean, you've only got to look at the third episode. What, what was that about? That had no bearing. It felt like it had no bearing on any of the stories that were going around it. But you look at War of the Centaurans, you look at the, the, the Weeping Angels one, they had some narrative in there that you could follow. And it was at a pace that was, that was I thought, well, well, well plotted. The other ones around it were just trying too hard. Oh, I sadly think with the, with, the, with the Weeping Angel one, I'm not sure that makes a bundle full of sense because the angel manages, because now they appear through anywhere you can visualize an, a, a, an angel. So if you can think of an angel, they can appear in your head. I mean, that's stretching things a little bit now. Um, the angel hijacks the TARDIS, but then she, she boots the angel out the TARDIS by rebooting the switching on and off. I don't know. And they arrive back in, in 1967, where the angels are, are take, they take over the, I don't get, they were taking over the, and so they sent, they were, they were killing everyone in the village again, randomly, but then they all went back to when the village was destroyed before, but then they'd killed everyone there as well. I, and then UNIT just took the village over, it turned out later on as a training ground. And it, I, I don't know whether that entirely made a, a, a bundle of sense, and whether it was all slightly masked by just going, she's turned into an angel at the end, isn't it? A great image. They were trying to get to Claire, who had an angel inside her. So, so the, the fugitive angel, if you like, who used to work for the division, had hidden itself inside Claire, which is why Claire saw the wings in the, in the mirror. So all of the angels were trying to get hold of her. Um, to try and extract the angel. It just happened that, they, they, you know, they'd zapped her back to this village and then they were, you know, doing what they normally do, which is killing off people as, as they were uh, coming across them. But it, yes, it is. When the you fugitive start, angel went inside her, because presumably that's the one that's yeah. there in 2021. Yeah. Wandering the streets of Liverpool. Yeah. So that's the one that, that, that was the one that the division wanted captured. But, um, but, but, but Azure and, and, and Thingy were hanging around 2021 Liverpool because they abducted Diana for no good reason. Yeah. We'll have a lot of fun with you, or you can just bum about in CGI land for another four weeks and then come back. <laughs> yes, very, very true. No wonder she wouldn't have a second bloody day with him. She was like, I thought I was getting a freaking storyline in this. What's happened to me? And she just reject, rejected him at, at the end. It was nothing like, you know, I've been kidnapped by aliens. I've been held for months on end. It was like, you were late for the date, so you ain't getting a second one. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many lists of awfulness with this, in that you you, you take the time to bring Jackie freaking Carkell in as his mum in the first episode. So how come in the last episode, when he goes gets back home, she's not there to go, oh, thank God you're alive? She well, what what was the point? <laughs> she might she might still come back no but but you know what the, the thing the thing and it's that thing that that russ did so well is that, that if you had a family element you had a realistic family element when rose went traveling and came home her mum wanted to see her again you had that connection you had that crisis is a real family that this travel has consequences whereas this is slightly bizarre that they just happened to be in the street with a walk and found him and then then that was it. Oh, there, that's that's Sontar and High Command. Good luck, sons. Maybe see you around. Don't know. Maybe they, maybe that's what people are like in Liverpool, but in the real world, what, what, what is this? I'd also still be a little bit worried that I didn't have a house back in Liverpool as well. Because of course, don't say, forget, yeah, that got shrunk in the first episode. Yeah. And that got shrunk by, by the dog man. Who, who, who was... Oh, I like Carvinist. No, no, but the dog man was trying to protect Dan, but then he was also trying to lay a trap for the doctor, but he knew that the doctor didn't remember anyway. So he's sort of in a piss with her, even though he knows she doesn't know what he's in a piss with her about. 
and can't tell her because it would kill him and end the series too soon. No, she yeah. was pursuing him. So she was pursuing him to try and find out about the division because he was the only one that is still alive that was an operative the same time as she was when she was the fugitive doctor. He set the trap to try and throw her off. Yeah, no, no, I get that. But what, what yeah. I'm saying is, is when they were together and she was like, you know about my history. He's like, I can't tell you to kill me. She's like, all right then. So, so why try and kill her to, to, to stop her from asking the question? The, the, the dog character didn't have a lot of consistency there. And, and I appreciate limitations on the budget, but we had a lot to talk about the Lupari as a rule. But we only saw one of them. The rest were all floating around in space because they'd yeah. been killed off by the and, and again, so, so the Lupari are so technologically advanced. They, they're the only race that can make a spaceship that could stop the flux. because The flux mm. eats matter, but the Lupari ships aren't Do matter. They, they repel matter-eating substances. But they didn't know how to stop the Santarans from opening their airlocks remotely. <laughs> there was quite a lot of uh, comments about genocide because you saw the L Lupari were all killed off, but but one. You had you know most of the Cybermen wiped out, most of the Daleks. Spoiler, they're back at New Year. Um, and then you had the Santarans that were also blown up. So it was quite. You know, it was, uh, plus, half the universe is still destroyed, which which is. Again, kind of just glossed over. It's like, oh, shall we go for another jaunt? It's like, well, actually, isn't half the universe still in a state of, you know, disarray and 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 being blown up? It's kind of, although that reminds me a bit of the start of two thousand and five, where you've had the time war, and that's kind of left the universe in a bad state. But this we've actually seen. You know, this we've actually seen you know, um, planets blow up and be, you know, be destroyed by the flux. So it's kind of, it does seem a bit weird at the end where they're like, do you want to go for another trip? It's like, yeah, why not? You know, maybe the rest of the universe will be destroyed as well. Yeah, and and at the end, when they say, oh, do you want to go for, for another trip? So they go all, all go in the TARDIS and the TARDIS is all back to normal. It doesn't have all that black shit dripping from the walls. And and all that and all the doors here, there, and everywhere. It's like, what 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 what's, what happened to that? How did that reset itself? I mean, essentially, the, the the end of the universe and the destruction of all the planets is like a really bad version of what we had with series four, and that was so skillfully done. Where it was like that planet's gone missing, that planet no longer exists, and it built to something. And it had two episodes where you had a resolution, and 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 you can say in some ways that yes. There was a lot of characters packed into this episode. I mean, bloody hell, we didn't need another two Jodies. But <laughs> stolen, stolen Earth, uh, uh, Journey's End, you had two Doctors in there, you had the, the two David Tennants, and you had every. I mean, you had Captain, you had a real solid sort of support. You had Sarah Jane, you had Jack Rose. Don, you had a lot of characters in there, and they all felt like they had something to do. They all came away from that. Even, bless, I mean, like the Torchwood team, they all had something to do. Mm. Everyone in those two episodes had had a reason. You didn't have Kate stood there going, well, I quite fancy this new Doctor, cheeky wink. It's like, oh, God. And, then and the they, tunnels, they, the only thing the tunnels seemed to resolve was that they had the Sontarans about to kill everyone, and whoops, there the door with the lightning, lightning bolt can kill all the Sontarans, but nobody else, and we'll shut it again. That was handy. Father Christmas is outside, if you can hear it. I don't know whether you can. I can, I can hear him on his... That's oh, kind of magical. This is, this is live happening live. Santa yeah. Claus is in the street outside. <laughs> the, um, I mean, Vinda is basically a replacement for Captain Jack, isn't it? Because that was going to be the, the build-up was that Captain Jack was going to be in this, this mm. season. Um, and obviously that was another rewrite that they, they had to do. But again, you know, he, Vinda, although he's in quite a lot of it, did he need to be in it? You know, unless we see again, in, you know, we've got the New Year one and then we've got the two more specials, unless we see some sort of resolution or some sort of, you know, uh, additional piece to him, um, that's, that's all the way through I was thinking, if it was Jack, what would, you know, what was, I wonder what the original plan was uh, as, as the as it went through, because he was kind of like in an episode, then kind of you know dovetailed it. You know when they did the love. I mean, and I quite like the fact that they did the love story at the beginning of the end, but then I didn't like the inserted credit at the end of um, 
the angels because then it just felt like oh by the way Vinda's still here so let's you know shove him in at the uh the last minute while we're while we're listening to the music of the credits so i think yeah i i i'd i'd want elements stripped out so that the elements that are really good could be properly focused on um and and less of the you know because if we went through two seasons of everyone complaining that the doctor had three companions and now the doctor's got like 12 <laughs> it's just like we've got dan but we've also got a whole range of other people that are now sort of semi-regulars and and whilst it's nice to have someone for more than one episode it was kind of like all right and then when you had the three jodies they had their own little teams because there was so many companions to go with them i, I think it's a great interview isn't it with john nathan turner it might be on the doctor's the where he just goes one doctor one companion it took me a long time to realize that but that that that's the best setup and it is isn't it you you get the dynamic between the two of them when they've got scenes together you've got a straight split on the on on the plot when you know when when, when they need to have two strands going and, and you don't have any of this kind of everyone stood around the console waiting for their line and and and, and battling to have something to do um I, I think my other thing that I'm, I'm, I'm full of positivity tonight, if I were agents or either Blake Harrison or um, uh, Robert Bathurst, I would question, did you actually look what they were being asked to do? Because they need not have been in the bloody thing. It's such a pointless waste of two names like that. What the buggery bollocks was the in-betweener in there for? I thought, okay, this has got to be something that's going to be picked up later on. This is going to be something that's quite, quite, this can't be as, as dreary as it seems in this episode. It's got to pay off later on. Nope. Absolutely nothing. Mm. I mean, tell, if, 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 if you disagree, please do no, say. No, no, I, I do agree with that. I, I think, um, and certainly that's something that's happened over the last couple of years is they'll, they'll announce someone and then they're only in it for a short time or they don't have any impact in it. And, uh, and I think you're right, absolutely. I mean, he, he was in like, two episodes I think and it was pretty much like I think he, he reappeared in I'm sure he was in two as he reappeared when Vinda came to find um Bell so he was he was there at that point but it, it was he was just basically there to say oh you know here comes our savior which was Azure and the um the passenger thing and then to say oh by the way your pregnant girlfriend was here before you came here and that was pretty much it, which is kind of like, you know, what, you know, it, there was no, there was no other backstory to this, to this person or anything else. It was just literally person standing there, which, yeah, again, you know, um, is, is, a, is a weirdly missed opportunity. It's kind of like, you know, you're going to be in Doctor Who, what am I going to do? Well, you're going to just basically appear in two scenes yeah i mean robert bather the, the the notion i presumably were meant to believe that the the big snake man um hypnotized him in some way because he was quite it wasn't very overtly suggested it was just made out that he was a bit thick um but it, it it that whole kind of he made his way through unit and and and, and nobody really picked up on it was a bit a bit stretching things. I... And, and that there was a TARDIS at unit headquarters all that time, locked in a room just around the time that the Doctor was exiled to Earth. <laughs> I mean, and it's, and it's done the unit dating um, controversy no um, favours whatsoever, this, has it at all. <laughs> well, that, that other guy from unit who, the um, Serpent King, whatever his name is, who he he went to 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 visit? You know the guy was eating the dinner and then he he, mm. he the car. Um, that could have been Tubby Rollins, who who, who Pertwee <laughs> mentioned in 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 Terror of the Autons. <laughs> they missed a trick there. They, they missed a trick. They 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 really did. I mean, it's not, I like the, I mean I, I like the board outside unit. I, I did like the fact that that was the the, the you know a nod to the past. That's 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 that's, that's when continuity is fun because. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, it's not upsetting the, the balance. But again, the, 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 when he when he killed the, the, the dude off at the we killed, killed old Tubby Rollins off. What was the point? I, it's 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 the one scene wonder thing of 
Mm. A, a, you, if you write it properly, it's fine, and you get a, 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 a connection and a payoff for it. But the second they were sat there at the table, you knew what was going to happen, and, and that was it. It was, it was sort of four minutes of dead air to get to the point where he killed him with his, his TV movie master, Snakey. Mm. Which was just well, such- People thought he was going to be the master, didn't they? That, that he was going to be revealed to be... He's, he still can be, still can be. He's obviously back for more, he's, isn't he? He's trapped on a rock at the moment, isn't he? He's mm. trapped under Liverpool through a dimensional portal door. I think just leaving him in Liverpool would have been a worse. <laughs> and, and oh, okay. Ooh. Ooh. I, I also at this point also asked the question, what is it with the house? What was that big? It's Lung Barrow, isn't it? That's no, that's cool. only that's only because people have read New Adventures and they want to believe it to be Lumber. As it stands, it's just it's just it's just it's a bit different. of CGI from a Netflix horror film. Yeah, it's a metaphor, isn't it? But it, it's I saw the clip of him being asked a couple of years ago about Lung Barrow, and he said, I, "I've never read it." Um, but then that sort of image crops up, which is very like. Uh, Lung Barrow, but it, it, or Cabin in the Woods, depending on with, with your your choice of of uh, films. But it it, it is, yeah. It, I, I like it. it. I like the look of it, but I, I, I it's yeah. still yet to be explained. It's a great CGI effect, but again, mm. this is what it comes back to. You say Lung Barrow, but the casual viewer, or even in fact the casual fan here, or even the fan who hasn't read Lung Barrow, it wouldn't make any sense if it does happen to be that. So this is why I think you can almost become too introvert when you look at this. I think you're right with what you said, P-Bell. The unit headquarters sign, a little bit of a squee there, because that's just it's just a nice little nod to the past. You know, the fact that they, they got his rank wrong and spelled his name wrong in the credits, it's a nice little nod to just have him in the background, you know, to have Nick Courtney there just in the background, just, just speaking on a telephone or whatever that might be. Um, uh, like I said, wish I could have got his name right on his <laughs> rank right at that stage. Those are nice little nods, and you don't need to have watched Doctor Who uh, inside out and back to front for twenty thousand years to know exactly and read every single New Adventures book and 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 listen to every big big finish that's ever been produced to understand what's going on in the episode. I mean, you look at you look at Russ with the first year on on Doctor. <laughs> Come on. Um, you look at you look at say you look at Dalek when they go to the museum. There's the Cyberman head there. If you don't know that's a Revenge of the Cyberman head, you just know it's an old monster. And the Doctor tells you that they were frightening and that they were once great. Even going into the next season when Sarah Jane turns up, if you don't know who Sarah Jane is, you know that she is basically Rose, but previously. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't take it's it, it's it's a kind of it's yeah. a continuity that is accessible whether you've got the connection with them from before or you don't know who they are. And that's that's the skill of it, rather than going, well, do you remember we made a reference to this six stories back and, 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 and we stood there for 10 interminable minutes having a monologue with Sasha and talking about ancient Gallifrey and, and 600 previous incarnations. Well, that bit now ties up to this bit. And I think my, my, my mindset on Doctor Who and the Flux was that it was meant to be one of those uh, event things. Now. Uh, my, we don't watch a lot of this sort of stuff. We're, we only watch old crap. But uh, we watched Netflix. Uh, Harlan Coburn did one called The, the Stranger. If you've not seen Ooh, it, yes. great watch. Yeah, Dervla Cohen, Jennifer Saunders, all the stars. Yeah. Now that is so skillfully done because there's enough mystery for you each week to go, I don't, I want to know what, what that's about. But there are enough things explained that you go, oh, so that's what that was. And then the next week, something else, that's what, and it rewards you as much as it sets up another mystery. Whereas this thought, this felt like it was, I'm going to be really clever here. This doesn't make sense, but it might do later on. This doesn't make sense, but it might do later on. It's like, I, I get that people binge watch and, I, and that's, that's an absolutely fine way of approaching it. But if it, if it doesn't answer anything with any great speed, you just sit there thinking, I don't care. You're, you're asking me to care about something that you're not, you're not rewarding me for. Yeah, I think uh, someone else we've not talked about really is Barbara Flynn, who I love. And 
there's that whole sequence where she's the second time she meets the doctor where she's explaining about the division and, and, and everything. And, and you kind of like when that first starts, you think this is it. This is where I'm going to get all the answers to the questions I've had so far. And even though they have quite a lengthy bit of dialogue, you're still left puzzled by the end of it. Um, and then for her to be disintegrated before you you get to the, you know, oh, and this is the secret. And then you have the fob watch, which is teased throughout the whole set. And, and, and again, I made the mistake of going on to different forums and reading people's theories and thoughts on this. And, and some people were really annoyed that she didn't open it at the end. And some people really liked the fact that she threw it into the heart of the TARDIS and said, actually, you know, rather keep the mystery of the doctor and, and try and forget about it and throw it throw the watch away that she she chose to to be the doctor rather than find out about all the other doctors and, but there's still that element of well what was the point then she's you know? dangling it in all the new promo shots so i don't think that watch has gone I for think good gone back yeah you'll probably have something to do with the regeneration um but you know it, I think again, you've got that prospect of you know I'm setting you up. Here are some. Here are finally some answers, and actually, you you don't get that payoff. And I think that for me is what's missing here is the payoffs for these things. And the division was Barbara Flynn and an Ood. The Ood is now in charge of the division and is still. <laughs> from one dimension to the other. God knows what's going to happen. This massively there. powerful organisation being run by an Ood. Barbara Flynn and an Ood. <laughs> um, I mean, that, maybe she can't get foreign workers because of Brexit laws or something. It just seems a <laughs> bit strange. Um, but then also, she, she meets the Doctor before she recalls her. So why does she go through all the rigmarole of, 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 of your recall to thingy? It's like, well, darling, you've already spoken to her. Why don't you just why don't you just hold on to her then? When she's in the time when uh, the time storm, she basically tells her to back off and you know stop pursuing um, her past. But then, like you say, actually, then just brings her to the division anyway. I think by that point, she was kind of like, well, if you're going to be a pain in the ass, I'm going to take you with me to the to the other dimension um, to stop you from, you know. Uh, buggering up the flux, basically. She was like, I'm going to take... The flux was set up to destroy the Doctor, who she then decides she wants to take the Doctor with her whilst the flux carries on destroying everything she without the to, Doctor. She wanted to destroy the, destroy the universe. She did want the Doctor to be there originally, but the Doctor was trying to fight the flux, so she just decided she was going to take her out and take her with the new one. I mean, she said in the, she said in the other dimension, it was the other side of the portal where you know the timeless child was found which again was kind of like a, a throwaway line but then nothing you know nothing from I'm sure it will come back you know we've still got a few more episodes but it I just yeah there was still it was kind of like mm, you know we're not gonna we're not gonna go there just yet but you say we've got a few more episodes but that was a six episode arc six yeah. episode story that we've gone through to me, you should wrap the thing up right there at the end, close the story off, and the specials can hark back to it, but we're now left hanging on the proviso that we might have another little answer given to us that wasn't given to us already in mm. one of the specials coming up. And that won't happen in the Christmas special. There'll be a fleeting glimpse probably right at the very end. The, Christ the, the sort of Christmas special will be, will be, will be kept fairly um, un unambiguous, I would have thought. But, you know... Those two specials there now, everyone's now thinking we're going to see, you know, <laughs> Binder again, or we're going to see this again, or we're going to see that again. Wrap the thing up, close it up, because that makes it a self-contained story, and I think that's how it should work. Uh, we have talked way too long, so we're going to cut this into two. So join us again for part two. Bye.